Welcome back to another episode of Shop Talk. So this week, we're going to talk about carbide insert tools and carbide inserts and how to identify them. I've had a lot of requests for this many, many times over the years, so we're finally going to go into this. And I'm going to try my best to explain to you an easy way to figure out how to, how to read the nomenclature of a turning tool, any kind of carbide insert tool, whether it be for turning, boring, threading, milling, that kind of stuff. Also with the inserts, you have nomenclature for the, for the, for the inserts as well. And I'm going to go into that. We've got two tools here and two turning inserts that I'm going to use for today's example. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to figure out what those are. And I think what I'd like to do is come back in more episodes and we'll go into some more examples such as threading, boring bars, threading bars, grooving tools, that kind of thing. And the book that I'm gonna use is this book right here, Engineer's Black Book. This is the USA edition. Now this was given to me back, in, back during the uh, Bar Z Bash. And these were, these were distributed out by uh, Bruce Witham. He's got a nice YouTube channel over there. Uh, his business is called Jim Trek, and he's known as the Getter Out King, but he was the one behind acquiring a bunch of these books from this publisher here and distributing to, to the different YouTube guys out there. And I was lucky enough to get one of them. And I'm not gonna go through this book and show you everything in it, but I will say that it is a excellent book for anybody to have, anybody that's gonna be out in the shop, it's got a lot of information in it, and it's a it's a great book to use to break down the coding for insert tools and carbide tools. So I'm gonna bring you in a little closer and we're gonna start talking about it. I'm gonna show you the pages in the book that we're going to. All right, so we've got the book open to the page that breaks down an external external turning tool holder. And I went ahead and, and wrote this out on paper so that it's easier for you to see on screen. And we're gonna start with this tool right here. This is a, a CNMG style of a turning tool. One thing that I wanna point out, and I picked these out for a reason. This is a right hand, this is a left hand. And in case you don't know, whenever you're looking at a tool, to know that it's a right hand, right hand or left hand, you're gonna be, for a right hand tool, you're starting from the right and you're turning towards the left. Left-handed tool, you're starting on the left and you're gonna be turning towards the right. Same thing for a brazed on tool. This is, it's the same thing, that's a, that's a right, this is a left, all right? So this, this tool right here, MCLNL-12-4-B. So let's break this down and I've, I've got all the, the info there. And I've taken and I've wrote the, the letters and numbers, you know, in vertical and wrote out the description next to it on what it means. And all this is broken down right here in this book. If you see the, the letters here at the top, the letters and numbers, it's listed one through eight. And there's eight boxes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And within those boxes, it tells you everything you need to know on what you're looking for on how to identify what that tool is. So you'll know what type of insert it uses, what size the insert, how big the shank is, if it's a right or left, everything is right here. So the first letter, the M, means that it has a, a clamp plus a pin lock. And what that means is that you have a clamp here and in the center of the insert, you have a pin. That's usually, you know, a cam lock. So the first one being an M, and it says it right here in the book, M is clamp plus pin lock. Your second letter being a C, right here it says C is a rhombic 80 degree insert. So that's the, whenever you see a C and MG, that's the, that's the shape of it. It's an 80 degree rhombic insert. The third letter, L, is the approach angle and L where is L right here 95 degree approach angle and if you look at a tool and say we're just going to kind of square up say this is a, uh, a, a square face and you got the tool next to it that angle in between the square face and the insert you know that's that's your 
at your approach angle right there. So you got five degrees of clearance as you come up to a, to a shoulder or a face. So you don't crash and rub the whole insert right there. All right. I hope that made sense. In is a zero degree re relief angle. That is, that is the angle of the insert right here. You're going to use an insert that does not have any relief angle on the, on the side. All right, the last letter there, L, indicates that is a left hand. You have, you have right, left, and neutral. You have some tools that are neutral. You'll have like a, a TPG, which is a triangular, you know, towards the center there. All right, the next number, a 12, and that is red right here, and that is the holder size or the shank size. So we got a three quarter inch by three quarter inch shank size or tool holder size. There's a three quarter by three quarter. All right, moving on, we've got our four. That is the size of the insert, this being a half inch inscribed circle. So that is the size of the insert right there, a, a number four, a half inch IC. That's how you uh, classify the different sizes of the insert. And then the last letter there is a B. You come over here and it has a few letters. B is a four and a half inch tool length. So if you hold the scale up there, you'll see that we got about a four and a half inch length on the tool. All right, so that's, that's that one. Let's move this one over and look at this one right here. This is our D and MG style of turning tool right here. Now this is an older insert uh, tool. And I'll, and I'll point out that the very first letter is a D. It's a DD. But in this book, it does not list a D for the clamping style. So I just went ahead and wrote what it is anyway. I think in, a, in today's tools, whenever you buy one of these, the first letter for this tool here will be an M. Just like this tool right here is an M. <coughs> so it's a clamp plus a, a pin lock. The second letter D is a 55 degree insert. 55 degree rhombic insert. The third letter is a J. That is a 93 degree approach angle there. So you got about three degrees of clearance between your insert and the face as you're coming up to a shoulder. N, again, is your relief angle. You're going to be using an insert that has no relief angle here. And your 12, or I'm sorry, the next one is R. So that's a right-handed tool. I got the arrow indicating the direction of turn. So you start on the right, move towards the left. 12 is your, your holder size. That's a three quarter square shank tool holder. Four, that is your insert size. Again, that's a, that's a number four insert, half inch inscribed circle. That's the size of the insert. And the last letter again, a B, four and a half inch tool length. So does that make any sense to you guys? If you have this book or you have any book like this that has all this info in it, it starts to make sense once you sit down and you study it and you break it down like this. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll move on to a couple carbide inserts now. So we're going to start with our CNMG 432 and that's this insert right here. That's a CNMG insert and this particular one is a Sandvik. And it says it right there, CNMG 432PF. All right, so let's break this down. I'm going to go ahead and it's, it's on two pages. What I want to do is start with the first page right here. And we're going to start with our CNMG. So just like the other, you have letters A through W that indicates the insert shape. C is an 80 degree rhombic. That's our first letter. All right, our second letter, N, that's our relief angle. N being a zero degree, which means you have, the way this is molded, you have no relief angle from top to bottom. This is just a square insert, so that's why you have a negative relief, negative rake insert, insert tool, so that whenever you're turning, it doesn't rub the side of the insert. You're kicked at an angle, so it's just hitting the top edge. Okay, M 
is going to be your tolerance and right here m three to seven thousandths and that's the tolerance that your manufacturers are supposed to stay within whenever they mold those inserts and that's pretty important with uh, manufacturing modern manufacturing you know when you're changing out an insert it's it's really important that the corner of that tool is in the same place that the previous insert was okay the uh, the three indicates the thickness of the insert uh, where was that at right here I'm sorry we gotta we gotta move over here to this side <laughs> so we we're at uh, we were at four I'm sorry see I jumped ahead of myself now we're on 432 so here's our our final charts five six and seven so four is your insert size again that's a half inch inscribed circle so it's a 400 insert the the next number there a three indicates the thickness three is a three sixteenths right there and then the last number is pretty important the two indicates the radius the nose radius a lot of the inserts I like to use is a one because it has a 1 64th radius you seem to get a, a lot tighter chip control with a smaller radius and better finishes I like the twos for more heavy cutting and heavy stock removal or interrupted cuts things like that and the last two letters it says right here you know eight is your that's your chip breaker designation the symbol is reserved for the manufacturer's chip breaker design so there's no breakdown in this book on the the last two letters because there's a lot of different styles of chip breakers and that's how that's all these little grooves and chip breakers that's molded into these inserts and they have a lot of different styles so this one being a pf chip breaker all right so let's move this one up and we'll do our last one this is going to be our DNMG insert. All right, so that's the insert that I've had a lot of people comment on. And a friend of mine, Mike, gave me a few of these to try out. Really nice insert, very free cutting. Even though it's designed for negative rake tools, this has a nice positive cutting action to it. Now this, this is not a Kenna metal, by the way. It's Ingersoll. He just relabeled the box for me here. So that's a DNMG 432R dash VF. So we break it down just like we did on a CNMG. The first letter indicates that it's a 55 degree rhombic uh, insert shape. N is a zero relief angle. The tolerance the same, three to seven thousandths. A G, that is the uh, fixing and the chip breaker style. I think I missed that on the on the first one. So let me uh, let me explain that. The fourth letter, G. Fixing and chip breaker, it gives you a cut through of what all the different inserts look like. So a G, you have a chip breaker molded on, on both sides and you have a hole going through the center for your pin lock. Some of them have, you know, some of them are solid. Some of them have a chamfer on one side and some have a chamfer on both sides. And some even have chip breakers only on one side so that's pretty important you know that last one being a G there on indicating what we got okay and then the fourth you know, we get to our 432 four is your, is your insert size half inch inscribed circle three is the thickness three sixteenths flip that back over we're up here again there's your insert size thickness and then again your nose radius the last number is your nose radius 132nd nose radius now this book does not show this R here but I'll tell you what that R is some inserts are directional being right or left hand only this is a right hand only insert so you can use this on a right handed a tool but you can't use it on a left handed tool you also can't take this insert and stick it on a boring bar that holds this style insert and go in there and bore because it doesn't have a chip breaker on this side of the insert. It's only on this side. So the R stands for right hand insert in this case right here. And then the uh, VF is your chip breaker. That's from Ingersoll. And that stands for vibration free. I, I know that because that's what Mike told me that the VF stands for. All right, so 
that's uh, hopefully that helps you guys out breaking these inserts down. Again, this book right here is a is an excellent book for that for that purpose right there. So I, I would recommend this book to anybody if if you're interested in it. Let me uh, flip that thing open again. You can see Engineer's Black Book, the USA edition. They also have a uh, like a metric version of it. Okay. All right, well, that's going to wrap up this episode of Shop Talk, and I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found it helpful. I know a lot of guys have been asking about how to read carbide insert tools and inserts, so I'm just trying to help you guys out that don't understand that and show you that there is plenty of easy sources out there to get your hands on to uh, figure out what this stuff is, okay? So, again, we'll come back to it, and we'll, we'll check out some more. I've got some other things in the shop here that some other people have asked about, and we'll go into that, too, on another episode of Shop Talk. I, I didn't want to drag this one out any further, so we'll see you on the next one, okay?